Hello everybody, this is Dawboy2187 and the GooTuber isn't as bad as how people make it out to be. The regular and firefin splat charters are the most what you see from Splatoon 2's sniper class. Being a stand your ground and flee when necessary weapon. It's very predictable to how they would play and how they would work as a sniper. Having the stingray and splat bombs makes it useful for flushing, escaping, hitting campers, and killing at a range. Or those running away things that are very annoying in single player. From what I noted off from the splat charger, it's pretty bare bones and effective based on how good you are at timing your shots and flushing people. But the main focus on how the GooTuber is, is what it can do. The set comes with Splat Bombs and Splashdown, two already great tools for what the GooTuber does. First off, shooting no charges can work well due to its bare minimum of ink consumption. It's like the Splatshot Jr, but a sniper. It holds its charge midway through its shot, and its hold is 6 seconds. For how long it can hold it, it does hold you back if you don't have things to shoot at or don't want the glow on you. And to mention this as well, at 70% charge, it kills. It's safer to have a 75%, but 70% is frame perfect and requires nice timing. At the full charge, it is slightly shorter than the splat charger, and basically in the middle of the squiffer and splat charger. So, it, that's pretty good. In fact, for most weapons at the moment, it outranges them safely. And for it to be more nice for the fact that it going up against close range things, it has suction bombs and it could snake around them, while your no charge shots come out instantly for you to swim through them. And I really, really recommend two swim speeds or and some ink recovery, as well as a sub saver. This strategy is as annoying as the Splat Charger's Rope Molotov from Bloodborne, but it's offensive and it's really messy to opponents. And you are accompanied with a special Splashdown. Pair that up with Suction Bomb first, then Splashdown, and Suction Bomb to Snaking. It's very devastating, like the Splashdown to Burst Bomb from the Splatter Shot. But this is more powerful than direct. Let's get this a uh, little review now. You got a full charge that's a mid sniper range, suction snaking around opponents, and strong bomb to special to bomb and snaking. All of this is very good options and now for the range thing. No charge with every sniper, exception being the bamboozler. Has 40 base damage while slight charges do upwards to 50 to 70. And what I mean by slight charges, I mean 10 to 40 percent. No charges goes two squares for every sniper, the 70 percent charge goes to three, and the full charge goes four squares. But the main difference is that 70 percent the charge can kill at that range. Basically damage up in Splatoon 1. And if you haven't known about that thing, that thing gives you more damage to your mid charges. And this is the only weapon that has damage up at the moment. And for every other sniper, they need a full charge to get the kill. Or at least a half charge and another half charge. Or at least three no charge attacks. So, the GooTuber has damage up, 6 seconds of holding your charge, splash down, and a great turf efficiency. People meme this one a lot for it being the worst, but honestly, it's the best sniper in my opinion. It is the reliance of sticking far away to kill people that people have in their mind as the sniper class. But the Bamboozler and GooTuber are much different and more beneficial in every option due to their more options to cover and how they do the stuff to their opponent. The Chargers, E-Leaders, and Squiffer also plays a huge different role than the regular stay away and shoot them. Chargers are best at killing unsafe options, E-Leaders camps hard and can turf the best in lines. The Squiffer has support and a tipper killing with a fast charge. The GooTuber is a snake who can explode when needed, kills at ranges, and the options what I said before. The thing people complain about the weapon is the charge is too long, but in fact, it's in between the E-Leader and Charger. 
being pretty good for the charge meter. And the charge time is alright when it's paired up with a mid charge hold and you could charge as fast as the charger but prematurely can charge faster as well. And the charger or every other sniper can't kill at a lower charge due to them not having damage up. And that's much more better as an option than having a battle like that. And pair that up with suction bombs and the sniper needs to move out of the way or else he wouldn't get that full charge. Which is good for you. You have more power up close to them than splat bombs, mines or sensors. But a similar weapon can work against it. The bamboozler. For how the GooTuber works, the bamboozler full on counters it in some points from not needing to worry about charging, outranging them and an easy escape method from the curling bombs. Let's review that again for how much options this has. Huge ink efficiency with no charges, 70% charge kills, suction bomb splashdown combination, snaking with suction bombs, plus splashdown and more options, charge denying, an absurdly long charge hold, 160 special charge, outranging most common weapons, suction bombs, super jump trapping and reaching most areas from camping places. Now this is a pretty hard weapon for people to get used to if you played the charger for your sniper needs. But this one has more options than the squeezer. And that weapon is specifically made to be a red mage shooter. But for the option coverage this weapon has, it far outclasses everything in terms of how much you could get out of a weapon. And for the other kit containing curling bombs and inkjet, its main benefit is the inkjet which is a surfing from curling bombs and snaking as well and it could be either powerful for escaping and shooting or sneaking up on the inkjet. The curling does do a good job combining that with the low charge shots and doing regular curling bomb stuff. It could also be a safety net for snaking and distracting your opponents while you snake around and shoot them. It's less effective than the regular goo tuber because you don't have suction bombs to play with. And the only other method what you could attack them with is your inkjet and curling bombs. So it's slightly below average but it's better at turfing. And that's about it to how the goo tuber is and I honestly don't recommend this one for beginners but this weapon is a very powerful weapon if, you, if you're gonna put in the time to learn it. The skill ceiling is very high and the floor is high as well. It's hard to learn and it's devastating as a bamboozler if you learn how to use it properly. It just has more and more options than every other weapon. Thank you guys for watching and goodbye. By the way, this weapon gets countered by things like the Jet Squelcher, Splattershot Pro, Tri Slosher, and Dark Tetra Dulies, as well as the Ink Brush if you play it like Sonic in Smash 4. The Jet and Pro are consistent shots while being in range where the GooTuber is not comfortable with. Tri-Slosher is very difficult to snake around, so you have to play it like a charger, which this weapon doesn't excel at. Dark Tetra is like the Jet and the Pro with its consistent shots with movement while the range and splashdown are scary. It's not as bad, but it's doable. The Ink Brush can camp with splat bombs and try to smoke you out while being immune to your instant line of ink because ink resistance immunity while being hard to snipe and snake around with, as well as it sub strafing. Also another thing that counters it hard is playing the goo tuber like a charger, where you stay back and shoot like fuck, that, that, that is a bad way to play.